Hi everyone, this is Matt to Show and Intro Stats, and today we're going to continue our discussion about sampling distributions. So we've been working through Unit 2, and we've been talking about to, in order to estimate population parameters, we need to understand how random samples work. And one of the best ways to learn about that is to create sampling distributions. We saw in our previous video that a sampling distribution is taking lots and lots of random samples from a population, uh, calculating a statistic from all of those random samples, and then putting all of those thousands of statistics all on the same graph. So we call that a sampling distribution. So think of it as thousands of random samples from a population, and we're putting all the thousands of random samples on the same graph. In our last example, though, we were doing small, uh, just a small example, uh, dealing with coins, flipping coins, and we only really did 60 random samples. And I want to show you how to uh, make sampling distributions properly with computer software. Okay, so. If we go to my website, mad-2show.org, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, a couple things here. I'm going to click on the statistics menu. Uh, we're actually in, in unit two here on parameters, estimating population parameters. And you can see there's a whole section on uh, sampling distributions right here, section 2B. And we'll also kind of be for a little bit talking about some of the shape of sampling distributions. And, and there's something called the central limit theorem. We're going to start to sort of introduce that a little bit as we, as we go through this, um, uh, this little lecture here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get some, get some, uh, um, get some data. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go to data sets on my website. And I'm looking for the Math 140 survey data Excel. Okay, so there's the Excel survey data. So I'm going to click on that. And that's going to give me this one. Always click Enable Editing once you open a data set off the website. There we go. And we just want to look. Now this is um, actually a this survey was a census of all the Math 140 students in the fall 2015 semester. So today, um, I'm going to treat my population of interest as just the students in fall 2015. So I'm not looking as my population of interest as all STAT students. I'm just looking at the fall 2015 uh, STAT students. And that's very important because that allows me to use this data as a true census of, the, of that population. And then I can start taking random samples from this data. Okay. So um, let's take a look at maybe the weights, the weights of, um, there we go, the weights of math, uh, of statistics students in fall 2015. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, control C. Now let's go to stat key. We, now stat key again is found on lock5stat.com has a great program on sampling distributions and creating sampling distributions, so we're going to be using that today. Um, so I'm going to go to stat key. Okay, so here's stat key. And today I'm going to be making a sampling distribution for the mean here. Since that was quantitative data, the weights of the stat students, I, I'm going to be using that to try to figure out, um, take random samples and see what, see what that gives us. So we're going to go mean here. So it's under sampling distribution of the mean. It's under, it's kind of in the middle uh, in the stat key menu. So sampling distributions for the mean. And this is kind of what you would be doing in some of the problems in the homework. So the first thing I want to do is sort of uh, go ahead and uh, put in my data. So we've learned in the past that we can click edit data. And we're going to delete out any data that's in there. I like to do control A and then delete. That just deletes out any data that was in there. And then we're going to paste in this data. Now this data does not have identifiers. Identifier, remember, means a word next to every number. And this one does not have that. So uncheck the box that says identifier. It does have a title, however. 
Um, so we'll, clip, we'll keep the box that says header row. Header row means title. Your data has a title. And we'll just push OK. So this is my population. Now remember, I'm assuming that my population of interest is only the stat students in fall 2015. So this is a census, a, a true census of those students. Okay? Notice the population mean was 154.998. So the question would be, if I start taking random samples from this population, will the random samples um, have a mean of 154.998, right? So let, let's take a look and try it. So when you're, when you're creating samples, you want to choose the sample size. Now right now it's set at 10. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as 10. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the shape of the population is very skewed. Uh, one of the things that we're looking for is we want to sort of ensure that the, the, the shape of the sampling distribution of thousands of random samples is actually normal. So is that possible when the population is already is very skewed like this? Okay, so let's start just, uh, I'm going to leave it as sample size of 10 and we'll see what happens. Now if I click generate one random sample, it's going to it's going to take a pick 10 numbers out of this census data, this population, and it's going to calculate the mean from the random sample. The mean came out to 156.5, and it's going to put that uh, number uh, over here like a magnet on the board, right? Kind of like what we did in our last video. We're just putting a magnet on the board for that random sample. So notice right away that these numbers are not the same as the population numbers, right? You can see the mean is different. You can see the standard deviations are very different. Again, we're already starting to see the principle of sampling variability, right? Random samples always come out different, and they always come out different than the population. Or I should say usually. So they usually come out very different and usually very different than the population. That's called the principle of sampling variability. Sometimes uh, people in statistics also today refer to that as the principle of random chance. I prefer sampling variability. Let's take another random sample and see what happens. All right, we got another random sample. It's pretty close to that one we just did. Let's do another one. All right, this one's a little bit off. We got a mean of 160.2 now, quite a bit bigger than the population mean. And take another random sample and another random sample. Start taking random samples. I clicked a bunch. I got right now I have 25 random samples and you can already see how the these sample means change. The, the, if I hold my cursor on any of these sample means, the, the data over here is changing. It shows you what 10 numbers were selected and what was the mean and um, standard deviation and median of that sample data. But what we're seeing again is the random sample is different than the population. Now I want to ramp this up. I don't want just 25. I want thousands. Whenever you do a sampling distribution, always try to get thousands of random samples. So I'm gonna just going to push reset here, and then I'm just going to click this button that says generate a thousand samples. Usually when you're doing this, always click the generate a thousand samples a bunch of times. Remember, more data, less error, right? More data, less error. Okay, so what we see here is, I've already got now like 4,000 random samples. Each sample had 10 numbers in it, okay, and there's 5,000 random samples. All right. We can see first of all that the 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 center, the mean average of all of these sample means. Remember, these dots on the sampling distribution are now each of these is a sample mean. These aren't numbers anymore from a data set. These are sample means of a data set. So we put 5000 sample means all on the same graph. Now while one, while one sample can be way off from the population, remember the population mean was about 155, we have, we have samples that were 180 and 130 and 140. You see a lot of this principle of sampling variability here. And then we can also see here that the middle, look, look for the middle, where's the center of the sampling distribution? We see that the center of the sampling distribution in my case it was 154.661 is 
pretty close to the population mean. What did we say in our last video? The center of a sampling distribution for at least for sample proportions is pretty close to the population proportion. Well this is showing us that this, this kind of works the same way for sample means. While one random sample is way way off from the population, the center of the sampling distribution is actually pretty close to the sampling distribution here. This, this, I'm sorry, the center of the sampling distribution is very close to the population mean of 154.998. Okay, so here it is right here, by the way. This is not the mean of one data set. This is the mean of means, the mean average of all of these 5,000 sample means. Now, I want you to look at also right here is the standard deviation. We said that the standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Okay, it's a very important number in statistics. It's used in all kinds of things. Standard error is the standard deviation of all of these 5,000 sample means. So in a sense, we saw last time that this tells us how far typical statistics, so typical sample means, are from the center. In our case, typical sample means are from the center about 12.281. Okay, so about 12.281 pounds. Now, notice the difference. Here's the standard deviation of the population, 39.548. Here's the standard deviation of one of the data sets that's, that, uh, that we took, 50.301. But look at the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. What do you notice? It's a lot smaller, isn't it? So in a sense, when we have a sample size of 10 and the standard error was about 12 but that's a lot smaller than the standard deviation of the population or the standard deviation of any of the individual data sets okay so one of the things is that standard error is always a smaller than the standard deviation of one data set or the standard deviation of a population now that shrinking of the standard error is really the the key factor here now what about the shape of this thing? Does it look like super normal or is it a little little off? Yeah, it does look like it does it does it's in the starting to get closer to normal. It definitely looks more normal than the original population, but it does still have a little bit of a right tail, right? It's a little bit it's kind of a very